All right, so uh, today we will discuss uh, in more detail the me uh, mechanism for a unimolecular reaction. So, uh, as we know that for a bimolecular reaction or uh, like elementary reactions uh, can be actually either bimolecular elementary reaction can be either bimolecular or it can be unimolecular. So in bimolecular reaction, what happens is that there are two reactants that gives the product and in a unimolecular case, a single reactant gives product. So the probability of three body collision is less and that's why we uh, say that uh, there is no such tar molecular reaction but there are certain examples, very few examples where actually you can have three body collisions. But we will restrict our discussion on uh, bimolecular and unimolecular reaction. Uh, when the reaction is happening, uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, there are basically collisions between reactants okay, that will give uh, the products. Now, uh, we can do it in two ways. One, one is that we can actually solve the equations of motion and uh, do the dynamics. But that's a more rigorous way because if you think that uh, we have to uh, basically uh, solve the either the classical Newtonian uh, equations of motion or uh, the, the quantum mechanical, the Schrodinger equation in motion, Schrodinger's equation. So uh, then uh, the problem will be uh, in a macroscopic system, you have huge number of atoms and molecules, so which you cannot solve. So an alternative route is basically looking at the problem in, from a statistical point of view. And uh, that was the essence of transition state theory, which uh, will be we discussed already, but we will discuss in a more rigorous way now. Now this uh, requires some knowledge of uh, classical statistical mechanics, uh, which we will skip, but we will give a uh, handout, uh, which you can follow and uh, see how uh, basically you can actually connect it to the uh, classical partition functions. Now, uh, before we go uh, to the uh, unimolecular reaction, we will first discuss the bimolecular reaction, as I said. So, uh, for a bimolecular reaction, if you remember that uh, there are two molecules. Okay, which are basically colliding with each other and then uh, the question was uh, that what iron and polarity visualized is that there is a potential energy surface. This is basically the potential between the molecules which is the reactant species and then uh, basically this side is the reactant side and this side is the product side. So reactant means here I have A plus B and the idea is that if this overall energy, which energy which is basically you can see the energy which is along the line of center of the two spaces, if that actually exists around the certain amount, let us let me call it as say E0, which is the threshold energy, then I will get a product and then uh, they said that everything happens, uh, basically the dynamics you can actually think of uh, going through something like a transition state which actually exists in between the reactants and the products in the on the potential energy surface which means actually the, this reaction A plus B going to product can be thought of as going through a transition state and then if you remember the Kyrene and Polony they said that uh, we can actually think of a equilibrium it's more correct to call, call it as a quasi equilibrium between the activated complex and the reactants, and then the activated complex is basically forming the product with uh, some red constant. And the challenge was basically to model this system, and then they said that okay, fine, since there is an equilibrium, they said that always you can write an equilibrium constant in terms of the partition functions, and then they use the statistical mechanics. But the entire point here is that when they formalized uh, this uh, theory, which is known as uh, transition state theory, it 
in the sense that there is a transition state which we are denoting by this notation dagger that exists between the reactants and the products. But the version which I remain colon in there is uh, more correctly known as activated complex theory in the sense that they kind of visualize that there is an activated complex that exists in between which I am denoting as a dagger. And if I know the statistical mechanical properties of this activated complex, I can calculate the rates. So it is more widely known as activated complex theory, which we discussed or which is also discussed in any uh, elementary text on physical chemistry. But uh, later, people realized that uh, this version, which was given by MVRD and Evans, and as well as Michael Pollan, so I'm just writing. Uh, and Later on, people uh, kind of realize that look, this activated complex is actually situated on a particular point on potential energy surface. In the sense that its coordinate is fixed, and the way we derive it that uh, things are moving from left to right, which means actually its momentum is also fixed because I have a fixed energy. So if you have a fixed position and fixed momentum, which means actually it is inherently a classical mechanical theory. Okay. Any transition state theory is actually classical mechanical theory, but when Eiding and Pulani was computing uh, the rate constant using uh, the uh, partition functions, they actually used uh, the quantum mechanical partition functions using uh, Schrodinger equation and uh, basically part for translation and partition function, they used uh, particle and of small and so on. And the question was, uh, this was actually, this is a very, like, uh, very subtle point. And then, uh, the physicist, Wigner, who is uh, very well known for his work on neutrinos and many other you know, theoretical physics, he said, uh, he pointed out around the same time that it should be a classical theory. But uh, that time it was not very popular, people realized it much later that uh, what is what was Wigner point. And that, that's what we are uh, going to uh, discuss today. Wigner said actually this is a dynamical theory in the sense that although we are doing statistical mechanics, my uh, dynamics is kind of inherent here and I can actually solve classical equation of motion okay, to show that ultimately it will reduce to the same activated complex theory. Now just to begin with, uh, this activated complex theory already they show basically we consider an equilibrium and there will be a delta g for the equilibrium because in equilibrium constant you can write it as e to the power minus delta g by dt and that delta g we now connect it to partition functions and from there if you just uh, do an analysis and also this k2 k2 is basically once the activated complex is formed it is basically the rate at which the activated complex is giving you product and uh, Irene and Polanyi thought that it will be a like this molecule will have 3n minus 6 or 3n minus 5 degrees of freedom, one of the vibrational degrees of freedom, which is very weak and which is along the reaction coordinate, that will give you the product. And then they basically came up with a relation, which is a very celebrated equation. So they said that uh, the red constant of the bimolecular reaction, you can show that it is basically a combination of constants, A is the movement constant, it is the temperature. Absolute temperature, it is the plan constant, and then it is nothing but the partition function for the transition state. You can actually write it as a QAB dagger divided by the partition function of the reactants. But this QA dagger is slightly di different. I will use a prime notation in the sense that it is not the all the partition function. One degree of freedom is actually taken up, and that's what they shown, and that's what every textbook also shows. Now they are actually they said that there is no such dynamics; it is just thermodynamics in the sense that uh, there is an equilibrium, okay, and all the equilibrium are casting to actually partition function. Now let us say what Wigner said, or what how the Wigner basically uh, visualized the problem. Now, this is a bimolecular reaction, although I have shown it as a one dimensional potential energy curve. In reality, it will be a multi dimensional potential energy surface. And what Wigner said is that, okay, fine, let us visualize that I have two regions similarly. 
have a reactant tradition, have a product tradition, you can use the same figure. And then there is some kind of surface which is lying at this region which is close to the transition state region. This is called as something like a critical surface. So the critical surface basically tells you that if trajectories come from there, okay, and if there is no recrossing, recrossing in the sense you can take that there is a surface and there can be reactive trajectories which actually come back, then actually it comes to the product area tensor. But if I uh, assume that uh, there is no recrossing, okay, then all these trajectories which are passing through this uh, surface will give you product. Now, uh, in the dynamical theories of uh, using quantum dynamics, using something known as reactive flux. We actually compute these trajectories okay, by solving Schrodinger equation of motion. But that's a very tedious job because you cannot uh, solve it for uh, like, uh, for, you have to basically do a sampling okay, over many initial conditions of the reactants. And that's a tedious job. Now, what we must show is that okay, fine. Let us think that okay, fine. I have a transition state here, and uh, all I need to know, okay, is how many uh, trajectories are uh, basically what is the fraction of molecules, okay, which are crossing this surface, okay. Now, he had in his mind or uh, back of his mind very much dynamical picture in the sense that there are trajectories, but how can I can actually avoid computing the trajectories? That is the inner picture. Now let us try to understand. Now here the picture what I have drawn is basically this axis is a coordinate. Right? It is basically the positional coordinate and this axis is the energy. But you can actually cast everything to phase space in the sense that I can actually think that for, for example for a one dimensional uh, uh, system right? I can actually have a different position, I can write the position as Q at different times. This will actually describe the dynamics of the system. Alternatively, I could use the position and the velocity, okay, which is basically the Lagrangian formalism, or I could use the position and momentum, which is the Hamiltonian formalism. And uh, so basically, what I'm trying to say here is that. I can actually, instead of writing it as a Q versus T curve, I could have actually cast the problem as a PQ, uh, uh, PQ notation in the sense that I can cast the entire thing in phase space. Okay. Now, we can say, let, let us think that there is a phase space, okay, and there is a phase space volume, and I have a surface. All I need to calculate what is the fraction of the molecules which are lying here. So that I can calculate by calculating the phase phase volume. How? Now, basically here we are calculating the number of states, right? Or now basically the number of molecules. So you can show, suppose I have a phase space area, something like that. What I'm saying here is that this area is allowed for that critical surface. Now, how do you calculate the number of states which are lying here? The fundamental assumption here is that. The minimum area in the phase space, this combination P times Q, which has a dimension of action, okay, will be something like equivalent to the Planck constant. Now here we are kind of using the notion of quantum mechanics, but in an ad hoc way. This is the only quantum part here. Okay. In the sense like you will now say that okay, fine. I'll just divide this phase space area. Each of them has basically area H. And then what uh, will be the total area? Total area will be fine. So I have say uh, dp dq will be the differential area. I'll integrate over this thing. Okay. And if I divide by unit area, then I should get the number. How many number of squares are lying here? As simple as that. Okay. Now this is not actually, this is for a one dimensional problem. For one dimension, you will have basically P, Q, 1 uh, phase space, right? But then, as you can see, that if I actually extend it for a system which has n atoms, then I will have 3n positions and 3p, uh, I mean 3n momentums also, right? 
So basically, it will be a six and dimension problem. Clear? Okay. So do not try to draw it, but the idea is very simple that uh, okay, fine, I have some differential area here. First, I will calculate that area and then I will calculate the injured area. In the sense that I will calculate the area and divide it by the current dimensionality to calculate the number of cells, which basically tells you the number of states, which again is uh, basically the fraction of molecules which are there. Okay. All right. So let us try to calculate it. So what we are saying is that uh, I have a surface. I have to calculate the entire surface, which is the critical uh, surface. Okay. But let us first consider a small subsurface there. Okay. And I'm asking the question: What are the number of states there? Okay. So this number of states I can uh, easily calculate. So this is basically I will have for any phase space volume. Okay, uh, again I'm just writing it in a more mathematical way. So this is suppose a volume of phase space. Now how do you calculate the volume? I said that like there are three n coordinates and then there are three n conjugate momentums. So the coordinates I'm writing at d2, 1, 2, d2, 3n. Okay. And then there will be three n conjugate momentum. Okay. Then I have to integrate this. Okay. And there will be basically six n integrations. So that will give me the total volume. And with this total volume, now if I divide by the volume of each unit cell, then I should get basically the number number of states for that given volume. Now for one dimensional, if you remember, each PQ combination was giving me a dimension which is H, which is an area, right? Here, each PQ combination will give me H. So, 3N PQ combination will give me actually H to the power 3 okay. So, if I divide this thing by H to the power 3N, okay, that will give me the total number of states. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'll first try to calculate what is the fraction okay, of molecules which are basically here and then I'll integrate over on the critical surface. And I will assume that this fraction will be, of course, connected to the reaction. Now, let us first try to calculate this fraction, this, this differential fraction. So, what I am trying to say here is that uh, now here I am using a notation which is star. Now, star means if I Try to draw it again. That I had a surface. Okay, and any state on the surface I'll just denote by data. Okay. Within the surface, there is a subsurface, which right now I'm just denoting as star. Okay. And then there is a global phase space area where actually the reactants and products and everything is there. Okay, so there is a reactant region. There is a product region, and then the surface is dividing, and this surface is basically the transition state surface. Okay. Now let us first calculate what is this probability, dn star by eight. Okay. So according to classical, uh, uh, the number of states, which the way we uh, basically wrote it, if you remember that uh, if I write this uh, fraction. So by using statistical mechanics, again it's a classical statistical mechanics, okay, so that we can actually give you a handout. That basically says that I should take the Boltzmann factor and then Oops. 
So what I did here is this fraction, okay, this differential fraction, what I'm saying here, will be dependent on a Boltzmann fraction. That actually comes from classical statistical methods, but you have also seen it, like in partition function, I have always a e to the power minus uh, e0 by kvd, but at this point, this h is a classical number, just classical. And this, of course, uh, in order to calculate the number of states, I definitely have h to the power 3 n, something like that. Divided by n. Now, what is n? n is basically the total number of states. Okay. So, n is nothing but something like an integration which is exactly like that 1 over h to the power 3 n, okay. which has 6 n uh, integration. Now look at the notation here. So what I did here is that I'm using the dagger notation here, just to clarify that this part is actually for n star, which is basically line here. Okay. But I actually don't need n star. I have to go to n star to dagger, so which means I have to also integrate later on. Okay. So this is a small part of the critical surface. Okay. At this point. And then, of course, this h to the power 3 n and h to the power 3 n will cancel. Okay. Now, what is this n? This n is nothing but the uh, total probability of uh, the states, which are basically uh, the starting point. But the starting point, if you remember, that this n is uh, nothing but the total number of reactant pairs okay. and this the n star is basically the differential number of okay basically a uh, differential number of reactant pairs that are that line in that critical surface. Okay. Basically this ratio. Yeah. Now this is the this is the meaning of that issue. Now how do you calculate the total number of reactant pairs? Now suppose if I have 10 molecules of A and 10 molecules of B. If I calculate the pair, it will be just 10 into 10. Because each one will have A will have 10 B, something like that. Okay. So this N is nothing but Total number of A times total number of B. As simple as that. Clear? Okay. Alright. Now, let us consider this part. Okay. Now, this is nothing but the, uh, and this type to the power minus H here. Now, according to classical mechanics, okay, so this is nothing but the partition function, right? Partition function of what? This is a partition function of everything. So basically, this is the partition function for the reactants, okay? QA or QD. But if you remember, when we uh, do this thing, uh, like we take uh, the global partition function is basically the multiplication of translational, rotational, and vibrational, and electronic. A translational, we always do get a V because if you remember that means uh, you will get an L for one dimension and then you will get an L cube or V for three dimensional. So, this Q which we will get is the translational partition function times volume because the volume will uh, sorry, the total partition function times volume. So, basically, I can write it as this the denominator. This is nothing but partition function of A times the volume. Volume of what? Volume of the quantity. Yeah. Which one? No, so what I'm saying here, I have the total Q, right? So the total Q is Q translational. Okay. Oh. 
Okay. Now the expression for the Q is this. If I divide it by V, then I'll get rid of this thing. Okay, but the V will always come because whenever you uh, like if you start from a particle in a box, so you get something like 2 pi n get t to the power half, right? And then there will be a L. Right? If I extend it to 3D, so it will be 3 by 2 for a particle in a cubic box. It will be H cube and I have L cube. So the V will always be there. So this is this we write as Q trans. Okay. And this is the V. So we should always say that transitional uh, partition function for unit formula. So here I'm just including the formula from the two, and this is nothing but u v into v, right? And the uh, uh, numerator is the same. We are not uh, changing anything. Now the question is, okay, fine. What I have to do is that uh, this is at this point. This is basically what I calculated is. What is the fraction of molecules okay, that are lying in this small region of the critical surface? Okay. And then I am asking the second question what is the rate at which they are crossing the surface? Okay. That will be basically the number of molecules which are there okay, and the speed at which they are crossing. Meaning, all I am now asking is that I know the rate will be somehow related to this quantity gn star dt, how they are crossing. But of course, gn star only describes a part of the thing. So I have to eventually integrate it over the phase space for the critical surface, not the entire thing. Okay. So we will do step by step. Now, first do this thing which is dn star d. So what is dn star d? Now then Wigner basically said that okay fine it's a very high dimensional thing right and it has basically many positions many momenta. Now only one degree of freedom okay is basically the reactive degree of freedom. Let us say this q1 data is the reactive degree of freedom. So whenever I'm taking a time derivative, it will be applicable only to this, not any other. Like it's not a chain rule of differentiation because all other are not changing. Positions and momentum are fixed. Okay. So I'll take a time derivative for only this point. Clear? Okay. Secondly, let us try to understand what is this H. As I said, H is basically the total energy, right? Which is basically the kinetic energy plus potential energy and everything. Okay. Now this H I can write okay, as some energy which is basically strained for that motion. Which motion? Which is basically the how the dq1 coordinates is changing. Okay. Now the picture is something like this. Like I have a surface, right? And I'm considering a small surface right now. And only one coordinate is changing, which is q1 dagger. Why dagger? Because it is on a dagger space right now. Okay. Now anything related to a motion I can actually consider classical uh, like kinetic energy. Kinetic energy expression is p squared by twice n, right? But this is associated with only the p1 thing. Okay. So it is basically p1 dagger that squared by twice n. But instead of again, I'm just using some reduced mass. Okay. Plus the rest of the thing. The rest of the thing basically describes q2 to q3n and all these things associated. Okay. So the energy I'm just partitioning, I'm saying that due to this crossing, which is basically the reactive crossing, I have some energy, and that is given. Clear? Okay. Now let us come back here. Okay. So what I have, I have e to the power minus h by kvt, but that h I already told that it is partitioned. 
partition how that it is uh, basically h prime plus h del right yeah okay and i'm just following from here to here i had one n in the denominator okay that n i can bring it here okay I'll eventually what i do is that i just have n is nothing but n and n okay so this n i'm there also one, one over n right i'm taking the time derivative of the entire thing so the next step what i'm doing is that uh, ddt of this entire thing okay so that will give me one n that i'm just taking there okay and already i said that it is reactant pairs it's n a times n b and i had actually two b's in the denominator okay so i can just divide it by b just um, divided by b so in the denominator i have only q a and q which are partition functions parallel yeah. Now let us look at the numerator. Okay. I have what? H to the power k n e to the power minus h by k v t. And then there will be a time derivative which is acting only here. Okay. So what I'm doing is very cleverly is something like this. Is I have e to the power minus okay, h prime that is nothing but p1 dagger square by twice mu, right? Okay. And then I have this guy. Let me first write the constant h to the power three n. Okay. Then I have this guy, but that I'll write it as dq one dagger dt because that is the only thing that is changing. Okay. Rest is the same. Now what was my rest? The rest was e to the power minus. I already have taken care of h prime, so I am left with h dagger by kvt, right? And what are left? I have dq two to dq three n, right? And I have dp one to dp three n. These are all dagger. Clear yeah, because dq1 already I have taken here. Clear? Yeah? Okay. Now, the next thing is okay, as I said, that this is basically a uh, ray which describes the ray due to this region, but I have to basically integrate over the entire region. Okay. Uh, basically, I have to integrate then this thing, okay. which will be the ray by definition. Because the rate by definition is what are the number of what are the probabilities or the fraction of the molecules okay that are lying here. But remember that fraction of the molecules lying in the critical surface automatically means that uh, this is basically the probability of the molecule those have the energy which is crossing the barrier. Okay. Second thing is that I am calculating rate, so it is not the number but at what per unit time how they are changing. That's why I have to take time derivative. Okay. So the rate of the reaction okay, should be nothing but this quantity which I uploaded. Okay. But then I have to integrate it over the all the spaces. Okay. Because I have to now say this is the condition and then I am uh, calculating. Okay. Now here is the thing. Let me integrate it. But before we integrate it, let us see here okay, what I am doing. So, look at it. What is Na by P? This is basically density of A. Similarly, Nb by P is density of B. Right? So, what I will have is 1 over QA QB. That will be there. Oops. And eventually, I will have A into B. Just a bimolecular okay. So what is the numerator? Now look at it very carefully. I will integrate it, this equation. Okay. But I will integrate it very cleverly. In the sense, I have h to the power 3n. Okay. That I will split as h and 3n minus 1. Okay. 
So let me just write this thing h, okay, and then I'll do a simple integration for the q1 q1 coordinate. Okay, I have just a problem. I can actually bring this p1 here and I'll just integrate. That's the thing. But look at it. I have dq1 dagger dq. Now what is p1? p1 is momentum, right? Now p1 dagger means actually mass times velocity. Now velocity is what? dq dt. These are all dagger. Okay. So this guy, dq dagger dt is nothing but p1 dagger divided by u. Okay. So I'll just write it that I have e to the power minus p1 dagger square by twice mu. Okay. Just follow it carefully. I have one extra mu, reduced mass, that I am just putting outside the integral. It's just a constant. Then I am left with p1 dagger. Okay, because it was p1 dagger by u. And then there is a dp1 dagger. Okay. Clear. This is just one integration. But there will be three n integrations. Actually, there is six n integration, basically. Okay. So all others, I'll just write it together. Meaning, I'll have 1 by h to the power 3n minus 1. Okay. All these things, which is starting from dq2 to dq3 n, dp2 to dp3 n, with e to the power minus h dagger by k. So basically, I partitioned the energy. Okay, one energy was associated with the kinetic energy, and the other energies are I don't care. Okay, which are associated with the positions and their conjugate momentums, excluding the particular coordinate. Okay. Now this itself, as you can see, is basically another partition function which has one degree less because that degree I calculated separately. And how separate I did the separation? This is the separation. Clear. Okay. And here I have A into B. Clear? Okay. Right. Now just I have to solve this integral. Okay. Now again, so what is the range of the integration? So I am varying momentum here. Uh, momentum should have all possible range, zero to infinity. Okay. So this is necessarily a gamma function integral. Okay. And a gamma function integral, if you remember, it is something like uh, e to minus ax, x to the power n minus 1 dx, that will be basically gamma n by a to the power n. Okay. Now how will you connect it? Okay. Just look at it. So here I have something like e to the power ax square. This integration is something like e to the power minus ax square. Okay dx, something like that. This is the integration, right? 0 to infinity. Because I see that there is a p square term and the variable is p. Okay. Now, uh, there is a, sorry, there is an x also. Something like that. Okay. So, how to, what is the trick? The trick is that first to look at here. It is x square. Okay. So, what I'll do is that I will not touch this one, okay. Uh, I will just make it as equal to ax square. But this guy somehow I have to make it as x square, okay. Now the, I can actually write it as d of x square, okay. Now if I write it as a d of x square, I will have 2x dx, right. So I have to use something like half factor here, okay. The x already I included here. But then, what I have is x to the power 0. Okay. Or basically, I have x square to the power 0. Okay. 
Uh, 0 is basically 1 minus 1. Okay, now that is the integration. Now you can again make a change in variable that x square is now z. Okay, now if x square is z, uh, the limits will be same 0 to infinity. So it is now e to the power minus kz, z to the power 1 minus 1 dz. Okay, that is gamma n by a to the power n. Gamma n is what? Gamma n is uh, gamma 1. Okay, by a to the power n, a is basically also that whatever the constant. Okay? So this will be nothing but 1 by 2a. Okay? What was our a? a is basically this thing 1 over 2. Okay, so this will be nothing but 1 over 2 into 2a. Right? So what I have is a. Okay. Now you see that this is just mu and this mu and this mu will cancel. Okay. So what I have is basically uh, we did a mistake here. So we wrote the Hamiltonian, but we did not write the KMT. This will be t squared by twice mu KMT. So the A here is Okay. Okay. So if I have mu cavity here, and what I'll have this mu and this mu will cancel. Okay. So if these two cancel, let us just write the rate once again. Rate for bimolecular reaction. So the rate will be nothing but I'll have kvt by h. Right, because this entire term will give you cavity by h. Okay. And then all these things, but all these things are nothing but, as I said, uh, this thing is giving me cavity by h. Okay. Because kvt mu, uh, h is actually, uh, yeah, kvt mu, and this mu is cancelling, so I'll have cavity by h. Okay. And for this integration, I am just writing it as, it is also a partition function, clear, yeah. ok, but which has 1 degree less, ok, let me just write it, it is, uh, I wrote the rate, I should write it not this one but per unit volume also because this is just a number. Rate is defined as the concentration. Okay. So remember this is basically partition function times volume and that volume and that volume will cancel. Okay. So I am not writing it in the final form. Okay. And then I will have QH. Okay. Uh, this is exactly the same expression as I did. Okay. Now, what is the essence? The essence here is that then we have showed this is entirely classical dynamics. Now, what is the trick? The trick is that I am thinking that I have in my phase space, okay, things are moving around, there are trajectories which are moving from reactant side to the product side. I am considering there is a dividing surface which I call as a critical surface. Okay. Now, I can calculate what are the number of trajectories which are going from left to right, per unit time, per unit column, that is my rate. But instead of calculating that way, what I did is that I just calculated what is the probability of the fraction of molecules which are lying in that dividing surface and at what rate they are crossing. Okay, that's what we cleverly did. But as a result, what we see here is that inherently, Number one, this dynamics can be shown as a classical dynamics. Okay. Because these partition functions are all classical partition functions. Thus H was just p square by twice mu all classical. Okay. But I get the same expression. Secondly, it is inherently dynamical. Because I consider dynamics. This is actually one degree of freedom which is crossing. Okay. But finally I don't care because I am integrating out all the dynamics and I'm getting the canonical partition function 
without invoking any idea that there is equilibrium between the transition state and the reactor. I need that equilibrium because I have to connect it to the partition function. Because there is a relationship between the equilibrium function and the partition function. But here I did not actually consider anything. I just said things are moving from left to right, which is very much dynamical. Okay. And there I can also compute everything. Okay. The partition function came only to calculate the number of states or the fraction of states. Now, the triumph of transition state theory is that versus the dynamical theory, dynamical theory is in the sense like where you actually do reaction dynamics, okay, is that here now it is a state counting problem, like meaning you can actually just use your electronic structure theory to calculate the partition function. You are not solving any time dependent equation, be it Newtonian, be it Lagrangian, be it Schrodinger equation, okay. The time already is inherent but it got cancelled. Because kvt by h has a dimension of rate. Okay. So then you can just do electronic structure theory, solve h i equal to h i. What are the density of states? And then you can calculate the partition function of a, partition function of b, partition function near the transition state. And if you can calculate the uh, density of states, then you are done. Okay. Then you don't need to do any uh, like uh, dynamics as such. Only that H i equal to H i solution will give you the dynamics itself because I have derived the equation. Okay. Now, from here, let us just see how to basically go to the unimolecular right? The unimolecular, we already discussed that there is a model which was uh, like unimolecular reactions. Initially, people are thinking that. It happens due to radiation. Now, uh, if you don't have light which gives you the radiation, then they say that uh, any reaction is happening in a container, and any container has a uh, background radiation, thermal radiation, which is a black body radiation. But then there are a lot of controversy, and then people show that radiation cannot do enough excitation, which can cause a breakage. Then actually, Lindemann proposed that uh, okay, so there should be a bimolecular reaction that precedes. The molecular reaction, which is basically A to product, but this M is a second body which can be an A, another A molecule which can be the wall of the container. And due to this collision, we have an energized molecule. Okay, there can be a reactivation, collision and reactivation. And once in a while, this A star actually gives you a product. So the essence here is that there is should be a bimolecular collision that precedes the A molecule. Reaction. Okay. So I can have the red constants like K1, K minus 1, and K2. And this is a very straightforward thing. Like uh, if I apply the uh, either the equilibrium approximation or, uh, yeah, so if I just consider there's a first equilibrium, the overall rate you can always write as something like K1, K2 divided by. A minus one into N plus K. Now this actually appears everywhere. This kind of model, like steady state approximation, everywhere it appears. So you'll always get this kind of equation. Times, of course, uh, now we can now quickly see here if I have a high pressure limit. Because this initially were all done for the gas phase. What will happen for the high pressure? Okay. High pressure means actually the concentration of Km is very high. Okay. So you can easily see that. Uh, okay. So before going to that, we always write it as something like K unimolecular liquid. Okay. Now you can see in the high pressure limit, what will be the K unimolecular? So I will have Km here. Okay, so K1 minus 1 into N is much greater than K2. Okay, so I will have K1, K2 by K minus 1 and N is cancelled. Okay, so in the high pressure limit, I will have K unimolecular, which will write it basically as K infinity. Okay, it is high pressure. That is nothing but K1, K2 by K minus 1. Okay, and similarly, I can also think about low pressure limit. Okay. So the low pressure limit is something like uh, 
n molecular which we write it as k0 the low pressure means this term will be small so i will have k1 k2 by k2 so k2 will be as a so what i'll have is k1 into k okay so these are basically the two limits of the pure molecular reactions and uh, Lindemann uh, basically successfully uh, found that at low pressure limit if I just plot the rate constant versus the concentration of the species as you can see that at a very uh, low pressure regime okay as you can see which one? yeah but I am just writing the immune molecular thing I wrote A separately okay so yeah, so it is something into this thing, and I'm approximately that thing. So A I'm not right. So now the question is, uh, how do you calculate this individual red box? Okay, for the molecular reaction. Now uh, there has been many theories. Now the first uh, successful theory uh, was uh, basically now you can think like, uh, what will be the rate of the molecular reaction? You can proceed. With say bimolecular collision from your Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, and then you calculate the function Q. Okay. And then you can think that Q1 okay. will be something like your collision frequency, right? But not all collision will give you a star. You can think that there will be some probability that I cross this uh, energy. Then only I can actually get this. Okay. But the reactivation part okay, will be something like uh, see, deactivation does not need any like uh, it's a deenergization part, right? So basically, I can write it as Z minus 1, but Z minus 1 and Z plus 1 are same because for order reverse, it is basically collision between A and M or A star versus M, but it doesn't care, it's a kinetic energy thing, right? So, what is the total number of molecules? What is the temperature? But A star is actually going into the internal energy. So, the deactivation of the activation doesn't matter. But for activation, I definitely need to cross the barrier. Okay, for deactivation, the assumption is that you don't need to cross any barrier. You can deactivate, just lose the energy. Okay. And if you take the ratio K1 by K2, K, K minus, sorry, uh, this should be the K minus 1. Okay. So, uh, you will get basically an Boltzmann factor. Okay, so the rate is nothing but K2 into the high pressure limit. Okay, so this K infinity is nothing but K2 into e to the power minus uh, 0 by K. But which is not correct. And people who have plotted it, okay, E0 you can get from RNAs parameters. Okay, so but then when they plotted it, they found that it doesn't match. Okay, and it's a huge deviation. Another question was why huge? Uh, then the first thing. What, uh, so this is the Lindemann hypothesis and then the next thing came the uh, next like significant modification of, was made by the American physicist uh, chemist, physical chemist Cyril Michel okay and himself said, okay, fine. What we said here is a kinetic energy. Okay. But in reality, what is happening, a star, a molecule having high kinetic energy, is not the sufficient condition. It should have enough internal degrees of freedom. What are the internal degrees of freedom? Vibration and rotation. He considered only vibrations. Okay. And as a model of the molecule, he said that there are some 3n minus 6 or 3n minus 5 vibrational degrees of freedom. Those vibrations, he said, let us assume it to be harmonic oscillators. Okay. So I have basically S, small s, okay, harmonic oscillators, which are my uh, system. So there are some S. Uncoupled harmonic oscillator, okay. And why uncoupled? Because I'm just considering this to be very independent. Okay. Now uh, this part will give an handout. Okay, where uh, how to calculate uh, this uh, total, like how to calculate the probability 
for the sense uncoupled and unused okay. Alright. So uh, what he said is that fine. Uh, I'll just uh, write uh, this formulated thing okay. again. If I just calculate the fraction, okay. This what is this fraction? This fraction is the differential fraction of the molecules. Okay, of the probability that the molecules are getting energized. Okay, and that according to him is basically I have suppose P0 amount of energy. Okay, and what I am doing is that there is some reactant and product. Okay, so all these are will say that suppose there is ester here. Okay, after the collision, and I have A here. Okay, and this much energy suppose I am giving to the molecule. He asked this question, how this energy it is distributed among this S uncoupled harmonic oscillator? That will be the most important thing to calculate. Okay. How the internal degrees of freedom are getting this E0? Because if it goes to the translation, it doesn't matter, the molecule will just fly out. Until it goes to the internal degrees of freedom, then only the bond breaking or making happens. Okay, that is the very simple uh, thing. But this calculation we can uh, like uh, show it later. Okay. So it will give you something like one minus s one factorial, and then e by dt into s minus one. And then I factor it by minus by so the book by Stenfield or Hendrickson Hansen. Okay. So that has a little discussion how to calculate the density of state for an S unharmonic uh, harmonic oscillator, which are uncoupled. Okay. Because usually you do not solve the harmonic oscillator uh, problem in the phase space and calculate it. Okay. So again, the total probability will be something like this. Okay. Now here's the catch. The catch here is that said that okay, fine. Look, this is what this is what we have computed. We have computed basically what is the fraction, okay, of the molecules. How the energy is basically partition among the S harmonic degrees of freedom. That's it. Okay. But the necessary condition is that the reaction will happen, okay, if and only if, okay, so basically I'm trying to calculate this quantity, k1 by k minus 1. Okay. I just cannot calculate over all the energies. Why? Because I need a minimum energy for the reaction to happen. Otherwise, the reaction will not happen. Okay. So then, the integration will be something like this. Now, you can actually uh, make a substitution, like uh, you, can, you can show it how to do it. So uh, basically, you write uh, this thing. So this is the total energy. Okay. And then all I'm saying is that I need a minimum energy, E zero. Then the energy available for this harmonic oscillator is nothing but E minus E0, where E is basically fixed. Okay. And then we can make a substitution. Okay, and then we can actually solve this integral. I'm not solving it right now. And if you solve it, then you can show that this will be with something like 1 by S minus 1 factorial. Zero by twenty raised to the power of minus one, and then I have two to the power minus two by two. Yeah. Now, what we have done here, what we uh, initially did, okay, is basically calculating this ratio: energization divided by V energization. But then that we do not do experimental or uh, that we do not measure experimental, right? 
What we measure experimentally is something like say the high pressure constant, okay, which is nothing but K2 times this thing. Okay. Now the question was you can calculate it for any molecule, any molecular reaction, I know what it is. I can actually do a normal mode analysis. I can get all the frequencies. Okay, I know what are the number of uh, is. I can calculate the threshold energy from the experiment and then I can calculate this factor. Okay, it can, it's not very difficult to calculate. And then K2 is basically nothing but frequency of that vibration which is the OPS vibration. That will give me reaction. If that I can calculate, okay, then again there was a problem. The problem was basically they found that it deviates from the experimental level by whole lot. Okay. And then another group of basically concept came that were focusing how to calculate K. Which means what Hinshanuk did, Hinshanuk did a beautiful thing. Hinshanuk did the first step how the energization happens, which was cut. But once I have the ester, okay, how that ester is giving me reaction for that the other theory step. Okay. Now there are a systematic development for this thing, uh, which is known as uh, the RRTM theory. So the RRTM is basically comes from Rice Ramsberger. Okay. So this is actually Oscar Rice. Oscar Rice and his postdoc Ramsberger actually gave a model which was also given at the same time by Castle. Okay. This is known as RRK theory. And later on, Rudy Marcus, as a postdoc of Oscar Rice, revisited the problem. Okay. And that's why it is known as RRK M theory. Okay. Now, uh, we'll skip the systematic development. It's very interesting though. Okay. But we'll directly go to the RRKM. Okay. What is basically the essence of the RRKM? Okay. So what is the essence? I mean, what basically Rudy Marcus said. Okay. Now, when Rudy Marcus was uh, doing, I mean, solving this problem, okay, in the 1940s most likely, that time already transition set theory was there. Okay. Wigner's version was there. So he had in his mind uh, very much uh, like uh, uh, something like a concept of the transition set theory. Okay. And then he said, okay, fine, what is happening here? Let us think about it. Right? I have uh, again, think about an energy. Okay. So suppose my total energy is fixed. Okay. Now what I am solving right now is that I have some threshold energy, same one like initial load was thinking. Okay. And this is the energy which is available to the model. Now this threshold energy again is, is kind of for crossing the barrier. Okay. And this energy actually I can write it as E dagger, it is something like a transition state notation. Okay. So E dagger will be nothing but E minus E0. Okay. Now, what is said is that fine, all I have to do in the transition state spirit is that I can actually define a uh, density of state or number of states. Okay. So, uh, how, what is the meaning of density of state? Suppose I have some states here. Okay. So, I can actually calculate what is the Number of states between say E Q E plus D. Clear. Okay. So that thing will be basically the number of states at E plus D minus number of states at E. Now what will be the density of state? Density means it's an energy density. Part you mean energy interval. So if I just Write it like this, okay. That I call it as a density of state. Now, in the limit that this DE is very small, okay, 
then I can use a differential equation. Okay. Which means then I can actually write that this is nothing but dg, okay, and d. When actually this is are very small, meaning this thing is kind of continuous. Because until and now it is continuous, I cannot use a differentiation because it's a for continuous variable. Okay. All the molecular energy levels are discrete. We are kind of saying that for a particularly for a high energy process where actually you are crossing the barrier. Okay. So your density of states of course increases. Okay, so it's not a very bad assumption to begin with that if there will be a density of state concept where actually I have a continuous energy distribution. Okay. So then this is the density of state expression. Now again, I can actually calculate this number g, the density the number of states for harmonic oscillator. That will show how to calculate. Okay. So that if we do it. So G basically is the number of states at energy clear. Okay. So for S uncoupled harmonic oscillator, we can show that this number of states will be something like this. Um, so this is actually small s, even if I don't write, usually it's written as small s. But mu y's are the vibrational degrees, uh, vibrational frequencies. And yes, how many possible, so I'll have mu1, mu2, mu3, all these things. So this is how you calculate. Now, how do you calculate it? So it is some, uh, we'll give you the handout where we'll see this. For example, for a uh, ellipse. Okay. So, what is the equation of motion for an ellipse or a harmonic oscillator? Now, I know that Hamiltonian is what? P e squared by twice mu plus half k s squared. Right? Clear? Yeah. Uh, if the energy is fixed, suppose I am fixing the total energy, so then actually I can write this equation as something like P e squared by some constant square, okay, plus x squared divided by some constant square is equal to 1. So that is the equation of an ellipse. Okay. But this is basically semi-major and semi-minor axis of the ellipse. Right? So in the phase space, the harmonic oscillator thing will look like this for a fixed energy. If I increase the energy, it will have another point or something like this. So all we are doing is basically calculating this. And then dividing by, if I divide by h, then I'll get the number of states. As simple as that. Okay. But now this has to be extended to s harmonic degrees of freedom, not only just one. Got it. So the number of states you can easily calculate. Okay, so I have basically this thing, then you can easily calculate the phase space volume. Okay. Because you, you know a and you know b and the area. Of the ellipse is nothing but pi a b. Okay, so here this is s square and b square. So if I write this equation like this, this will be the area, and this divided by h will give me the number of states for a one dimensional ellipse. Similarly, you can actually do it for like s. Dimensional ellipse, so actually uh, there are s uh, different oscillators. Okay, that will give you this thing. Here, it will be for f divided by all these things. Okay. Okay. Now. This is the number of states. So, what will be the density of state? Density of state is just you have to take the derivative, okay? With respect to what? With respect to energy, right? So, what I will have is, you see here, it is s, so I will have s minus 1, okay? So, I am just writing it 
first, I will have s minus 1, and then I will have e to the power s minus 1 divided by I will have i now so this is uh, one thing so if you remember that uh, the rate constant which we did in the bimolecular reaction. So, if you remember that the rate constant was something like, uh, if you remember correctly, that uh, that time we were considering that uh, we have some number of states, right, divided by the total number of states because that's how we calculated it dn by dn star by n, something like that, okay. So, in the RRK model, actually, you do it, okay. And once you do it, you can show that, okay, find this rate constant, okay, it will be nothing but, I have, I have to calculate what is the number of states, okay, which are lying above E0, okay, divided by this quantity. Now, what is N? N is basically the density of state for the enter. Okay. Now, let me just write it here. So this will be now I have the expression for G as e to the power x in factorial. Now, think about it. What I have written it is basically G data. It's the same concept. Okay, so I had a region in the face test. Okay, I want to calculate the number. But when I calculate the number, this is a trick. The trick is that they say that one degree of freedom would be less, always, when you calculate it. So when you calculate one degree of freedom less, meaning you have to isolate, you have to write this thing as something like for, for G data, okay. you have to write it something like one combination which is one E, okay, and one H mu, that you take up. Okay, and then you write the rest of it. Okay, so G dagger means actually the number of states which has one particular degree of freedom less. So this expression will be something like it's a similar expression, and you can follow it. So I'll have something like e minus e zero. Now instead of s, it will be s minus 1 point because there is 1 degree of freedom there. Okay. Here instead of s, I will have s minus 1 factor here. Okay. And here the summation will also be i equal to 1 to s minus 1. Okay. Divided by I have h and density of state. Okay. Divided by I will have uh, h. And then what I have, the density of state expression I already showed. It is e to the power s minus 1 divided by s minus 1 factorial i h u i and equal to 1 to this. Now, again, think about it. This corresponds to this region. Okay, and this number of states corresponds to the entire region. Something like that. Okay. So now you can see there's a h here. Okay, this h and this h can be multiplied. And then I'll have the same dimensionality for h in the denominator. 
sir get rid of the h right there okay so this expression is reduced to something like it will be something like this over here e minus e zero divided by e to the power s minus one right and uh, then I'll have a interesting thing here pi mu pi sorry data and divided by pi mu I will conform to s and s and s and what do you mean by this? Think about it. What I have is that I just like combine the e's, right? And then how the pi comes, but if you remember that uh, when you write the harmonic oscillator partition function, okay, all these h mu's get multiplied. Okay, so that is the notation for that. Now what I am getting ultimately, look at here for me, that I have a frequency. Which frequency, which are the transition state frequency? Like the molecule when it is excited, that will have some frequency which is slightly different. These are actually new dagger. Okay. But then one frequency is less, that's why the sum is going from 1 to s minus 1. Denominator, I have the frequency which is the normal force in the ground state, like it's an overall thing. Okay, it's not the dagger, it's the entire thing. Because that's why it gets basically the ratio and the probability. But at the end of the day, interesting thing to look at here is the numerator, sorry, denominator as one extra dimension. This will not just cancel because this set of frequencies are different from this set of frequencies. Okay. And also I see that when the number is one less, which means overall I have a frequency inverse unit, which is red. Okay. But this red is not a thermal in average rate, it is a for a rate for a fixed energy. But you do not do the experiment at a fixed energy, you do an experiment with a fixed temperature. Okay. So this rate is known as actually microcanonical rate constant. Okay. So this is known as a micro canonical rate constant. Okay. But from there we have to actually calculate K of T. Right? Now how do you calculate the K of T? You just have to calculate this k of e. Okay. What is it that if I have a fixed energy, which is e given to the system, what will be the rate? Okay. Times I have to also calculate what is the probability of having the energy e for a given temperature and then integrate over the entire thing. And then I will get the rate cost. Okay. That's what basically is. Uh, the essence of the Markov theory. Okay. But how do I arrive at it? I skip it again. Okay. Because this needs uh, a lot of mathematics. But essentially, as you can see, this will be still the ratio of the states. Okay. In, in some sense. Now, So what Marcus said is basically the similar thing, like I have something, the energy molecule, okay, going to product, but then he said that he did something to go into an activated form. That is the essence of Marcus theory. Okay. The M modification of Marcus. The earlier expression which I showed is uh, mainly due to the RRK version. Okay. Now, how do you get P of P? To basically get, I can, I always can calculate of e, okay. But then I have to say, what is the probability that I have the energy e, okay? And then I have to integrate over all possible energies. That is the essence, okay. But then remember, this has not the lower limit as zero because the condition is that you should have your minimum energy e. Again, uh, let me just draw the picture. Okay. This is what is happening. This is the total amount of energy fixed 
right? And then I said I need minimum E0 to cross it, right? So the transition state basically gets a share which is E minus E0. Clear? Yeah? Okay. What can be the total energy? If I reduce it, reduce it, reduce it, if I go up to E0, it will just happen, the reaction. If I go below, no reaction will happen. So I can have E like this. So this is for a fixed state. But now for a fixed temperature, this E will also change. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Now you will change in such a manner that it cannot be below E0. If it is E0, then this guy goes to 0. Okay. But E can go to infinity, then this guy also can go to infinity. Okay. But the lower limit has to be zero. Okay. Now from going from microcanonical to canonical means now I am saying that the E itself is right at a fixed temperature. But again, it cannot be less than zero. Because then this guy gets negative. That is no Okay. Now What he said is that okay fine. So I have basically in the same token, like the number of states away. Okay. I can write it as something like the number of states okay, which are having energy more than e zero. Okay. This is exactly your transition state kind of expression. Okay. If you remember that we wrote it, right? Uh, basically, the partition function one, well, but uh, right now actually we are following the density of sorry, uh, the uh, basically this uh, G dagger. And what was our A expression? Remember, uh, we have G dagger divided by H n. Right? What was n? n is basically the total number of states. Right? Now, if you remember. Uh, the density of states basically. Okay. Now, that thing, you can always write it. Now, if you think that I'm just writing it like this, and what was the K expression? K expression was basically G dagger divided by Hn, right? But n is basically the density of states, okay, which you can connect, okay, to partition function. We are not showing it here. Okay, we're just saying that okay, fine. I'll have an expression something like this. Okay. Now this is again, this is the microcanonical part, okay, and the probability is here. Just the Boltzmann probability. Okay. And all I have to do is to integrate between e0 and e. okay, keeping this picture in mind. Now I'm adding e also. Now, the question is, okay, fine, then let us think, like, how will I solve it? Okay. Now, I have to do a changing variable. What is the changing variable? Look at it here. If E0 is fixed, okay, I can actually write, and E is also fixed for the microcanonical thing, okay. But I can actually, instead of uh, writing it as, like P, e, I can actually make a change in variable as E dagger. Okay, so means this total energy E is basically E0 plus E dagger. E0 is a constant. So right now I can actually take out it out of the integral. Clear? Okay. So what I am saying here, I could write this expression as E0 minus E0 by KT okay. by HQ. Okay. Then this guy, think about it, E minus E0 is what? E dagger. Okay. So this is nothing but G dagger of E dagger. Okay. What is this guy? This is basically E to the power minus E dagger by KVT. Uh, what is your D dagger? DE. DE is nothing but D dagger minus D plus D E0, but D0 is a constant. Okay. So I, the change in variable only resulted in taking out a factor which is equal to 0 by k. Okay. But now, if the log limit is 0, okay, what is the log limit of eta? If the log limit is 0, 
is zero minus zero. It is zero. Apart from it, e was infinity, infinity minus e zero, that is infinity. So now I have actually zero to infinity, and now we did. Okay. Still, it is kind of what it is saying. It is basically saying I have a e to the power minus e to the power cavity, some h, some q. Okay. But look at it. I have basically something like g dagger, which is basically the number of states in the transition state area, okay, which has energy e dagger, and I am varying this e dagger. So think about it. If the total energy varies, this thing also varies because this is space. Okay. Now I am actually this is my variable, or this will also vary. So I have changed the variable from e to e dagger. That's it, because e zero is a constant. Okay. Now this looks pretty odd, like pretty odd expression at this point, right? It is uh, there is no like partition function and all this stuff. Now let us see how to basically cleverly compute it. Okay. Now uh, look at it carefully. Now what is your uh, this thing? Like I have whatever we have this exponential thing. Okay. Let me just write it like this. First, let me have this to accept. What is this quantity? Okay. See, I have actually two variables. If okay. here, so I have to integrate my parts. Okay, because this is also a function of energy. Because density of states, of course, changes. Uh, uh, like number of states, of course, changes as a function of energy. Also, I have this Boltzmann factor as a function of e dagger. Okay, so I have to do integration by parts. Okay, but I'm just playing a trick. The trick is that okay, fine. Uh, integration of parts, if you remember, like I have to do u integral v x and that way, right? And then there is a derivative part. So what is this one? If I do it, okay. So this will be minus okay, one over a b. Right? And I have e to the power minus e dagger by a b t e dagger. Right? So this guy, okay, I could have written as this multiplied by minus k b t. Why I'm doing it? Because see, now if I have this thing, I will have a k b t by h factor here connecting to your, right? Uh, by molecular transition state theory, but there is a minus sign. We'll forget about it. Okay. So there is a minus sign of KBT by H. Fine, I have taken care of the KBT by H term. Okay. I have also taken care of this e to the power minus e zero by KBT term, which also appears tied in equation. I also have one over Q, which is great. So that thing should be Q, Q dagger, basically. How? That's a question. Okay. So what I have now is integral 0 to infinity, okay, this g dagger of p e dagger, okay, and d d e dagger, sorry, to be dagger, of e to the power minus e dagger by k. Clear? I should have written it like this D of yeah, it's a differential basically. Clear up to this point. Right? Now see, this is actually easier because I can actually use it as a first function. Because first function is basically integral of that. Right? So if I just integrate, it will be the same thing. Okay. So let us just write it. So I have this factor, okay, minus kvt by h, okay, e to the power minus dk by kvt, 1 over q. Now let us look at it, okay. So what I'm saying here is uv dx, okay. So u integral of v dx, okay. 
So u is basically this. Integral of this is the same thing. Okay. So time half is g dagger, which is a function of e dagger, e to the power minus e dagger by kvt. Is avoided between the limits zero and infinity, right? And then what I have is minus integral. Now what I have to take this derivative of this, right? And then the total integral. So I am just writing the first uh, the derivative. Is just a bit of this. And yeah, then integral of this thing, which will give me the integral minus and uh, yeah. okay just integration by parts now look at it if I have zero if I have infinity here okay so e to the power minus infinity by activity that is zero if I have zero here, the density of state vanishes at zero. Okay. Which means this part is zero. Okay. What about the second part? This already by definition is the density of states. This is nothing but e dagger. Right? Because derivative with respect to state is basically density of state. Okay. And density of states, what is a partition function basically? Partition function, you know, that like the, uh, like the, if I just write it as a, like the, the probability is always something like the minus 8 by infinity. And then uh, we have the, uh, Now this is if I do not sum over the states. If I sum over the states, if I sum over the level, so I, then I write the number of things also. But this is nothing but this thing, right? Which is the key thing. Okay. There. That's why that any into q we wrote it as uh, I mean like that's why we wrote it as a HQ combination. Okay. This is the definition of the probability. Okay. Now think about it. Like then, according to the definition, what is any e to the power minus kvt and the integration of that? That is nothing but your partition function itself. Because the partition function itself is any e e to the power minus e kvt, but what partition function it is called the transition state. So this is basically q dagger. But then I have a negative sign because it was a q integral of v dx minus that minus and that minus now cancels. So what I have is kvt by h. If I write that thing first, q dagger by q okay, e to the power minus e0 by k. Okay. So that is basically the Marcus theory. So basically Marcus showed that I have the same ideal equation kind of expression which I derived from the bimolecular reaction rate in a very very different way. Clear. And uh, but again we actually skipped many steps in showing it because we showed that uh, there is uh, all these harmonic oscillator calculations we did not show explicitly. But what you can show here is that this probability, if you remember, okay, any probability, uh, the classical probability is nothing but it's the Boltzmann factor divided by the total integration, which is the partition function. 
if you are doing by level, then levels can be degenerate. So a level of energy E can have n state. That is basically the meaning of density of states. Okay. And then this is nothing but we could have written it like this. So Q by definition is density of states times the Boltzmann factor. And then if we just integrate over the all the energies, okay. And here we see the derivative is nothing but the density of state. This multiplied by the Boltzmann factor and this has to be the partition function. But what partition function? Because this was all in the dagger thing, which is above the E0. Okay. And then basically Marcus showed the canonical rate, okay, reaction rate is equivalent to the bimolecular transition set theory rate. Okay. So, but there is a de clear difference. There I had Q and QB. Has to be because actually there was A and B giving me product. We are actually starting from A star itself. Okay. And then he showed that basically, okay, transition state theory is also true for unimolecular rate. So Marcus basically gave the transition state theory version, which is basically the Wigner's way, the dynamical way version of unimolecular reaction. Okay. And he said that this is basically the same expression. But in a very different way. Because uh, originally, if you remember the way we were writing it, okay, it's it's very very different, like S uncoupled oscillator and that way, right? But at the end of the day, you get the same expression. Okay. Alright, so we'll just uh, stop here.